Welcome to this edition of Open OpenSCAD by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at this. Um, this rather strange object is actually a jig for my 3040 CNC. So, uh, a couple interesting points. Even if you don't have a CNC, I think I'll share uh, with you that are productive. And one of them is the creation of these stanchions. So, one of the pieces with the creation of these stanchions, um, what I had to do was in order to come up with them instead of creating each one individually I wanted to come up with something at least that was semi parametric now I won't claim these to be perfectly parametric but what I have done is if I scroll down here and I find uh, that module pin module is I created a module as you can see here and it's comprised of two for loops one for loop for the y axis here and one for the x axis now one of the things that I did is I explained to the algorithm to take the the height and width of the box uh, in a two dimension space and then calculate via the size of the pins how many could go in there now the the issue is is the starting point of those pins was a little bit problematic but the way I overcame that instead of doing a whole lot of recursive mathematics to kind of come back and figure out what the starting point was is by enclosing them in in this module pin module when I called it from the main module up here um, what we can see here is I simply do a translate on the entire module itself and then what I can do is my parametric settings up here you see mount X mount Y so I can set my offset in this case six millimeters to center this inside the box uh, manually if you will so it, it is semi parametric in the fact I can adjust it up here but it won't adjust itself automatically uh, however I thought that was really a nice quick and dirty way to do this because I didn't want to spend a whole lot of time creating this model because this is sort of a a uh, little bit of a one-off model and not something I, I hope well intend to repeat and maybe I'm wrong but um, it was an interesting way to achieve this now the other pieces because I'm creating a box I'm creating a hole in a box I'm creating pins with inside the hole in the box I did have to structure this and this is one of the things you know you old-timers to open SCAD will probably realize this uh, but for the for the newer folks out there getting into this this is where layering modules really comes in handy because as you can see in here I've got you know the mount module I've got the box module I've got the pin module and then what I do is I then I have the lug module and then what I do is I bring it all together in what I'm calling the main module and this helps me keep everything kind of sorted out in, in my head and then as you can kind of see here how I, I bring it apart bring it apart I mean actually bring it together is or bring the parts together is so I have the box module which I call then I call the pin module then I call the various lugs now I could have got a little bit more fancy with the lugs the lugs happen to be these guys over here is what I'm referring to and these actually mount this to or allow a bolt to pass through and mount this to the bed of the CNC um, I, I could have probably have done a simple for loop but it was just quicker to, to whip it out this way and again I, I don't expect huge modifications to this or where I do different variations that many anyway so I just kind of wanted to get it out as fast as possible and you can kind of catch what I'm going to use this for in, in another episode because uh, I, I think this is going to be kind of interesting in uh, what it does and I think you guys will find it interesting so if you're not su subscribed to the parent channel DIY3DTech.com would highly suggest it because I'll show you how to use it over there in, in probably a few weeks after this video comes out anyways um, so those, those are some of the highlights and so if you're going to build something like this um, you know I'm calling it a pin box or a jig um, you know go ahead steal this code it'll be out on the website so tell you what this is this was a rather long print I think it took around eight hours to print on the tarantula so uh, let's just go watch a quick time lapse of it then meet back at the uh, printer and take a look at how it all came out okay so welcome back um, here we have this printed we took a quick look at the time lapse of it printing 
and uh, here's the finished product. Now I did get some anomalies around the base of these posts. I'm going to have to go back and take a look at the model. Uh, I'm not going to worry about it so much. There is a, they're a little bit um, not as sturdy as I would like because there seems to be a gap. The idea was is the base would rise up uh, far enough. So I'm not sure. I'm going to have to take a look at the model. I might have some artifact of a base left in the uh, in in one of the modules. So I'll take a look at that. Not a huge problem uh, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually epoxy the bottom of this um, to make it stronger. I plan to do that anyway, so that, that should work out fine. Uh, the whole centers look good here to mount it to the CNC machine. So I'm not going to exactly share in this episode what this is for. There's still a couple more pieces I have to build to go inside here. But, um, you know, keep an eye out on the main channel, uh, DIY3DTech.com. If you're not subscribed to that channel, I'd highly suggest subscribing and you'll see what I'm going to use this for on the CNC. It's going to be, I hope, downright interesting and actually a bit of a novel use. So anyways, uh, hey, hopefully you found this build interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it. Uh, don't forget our swag shop up in the corner. There'll be a subscribe button uh, over here coming up. If you're not subscribed to the OpenSCAD channel, please do. I appreciate it. If you are subscribed, thank you very much. If you got questions, hit me up below. And hey, we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.